Hello everyone, and welcome back to DMG. A little while ago, I looked at the Pavilion DV2500, a 14-inch entry in the Pavilion lineup from the late 2000s. While the laptop looked quite good and had nice multimedia features in the terms of its screen and speakers, unfortunately, its overheating processor and poor design made it a laptop that I did not recommend. Today, we're giving the 14-inch Pavilion a second chance with the Pavilion DV4 from a few years later. This model is a little bit sleeker and shares some design cues with the HDX16 while also being powered by the Turion processor. So this is definitely going to be an interesting thing to look at. Now, the first thing I thought when I picked up this laptop, when I took it out of its box, was, wow, it's a mini HDX16. Now, the HDX16 here on the left is one that I looked at on the channel a while ago. And while I did have some complaints, it's one of my favorite laptops of all time. You can see the two laptops share a nice silver bezel around the edge, a silver keyboard, the idea of the, the grate over the speakers, and a border around the keyboard. Now, this border is translucent plastic on the HDX16, but on the DV4, it's an extension of the speaker grill. So that's a nice, that's a nice style that I really like. Another nice thing about this laptop is on the keyboard. While you do lose the numpad of the HDX16, you do get full-sized arrow keys, which the HDX does not. And finally, one of my favorite things of all time, both laptops have a plastic sheet that covers both screen and bezel, giving them a lovely, seamless look. So, Oh, and of course, when it comes to outer shell design, the two have gorgeous little themes, and this one is kind of this blue bubbly design. All of the pavilions have a different, uh, unique look, and that's one of my favorite things about them. While it's already open, I might as well talk about the second thing I noticed on the inside, which, wow, that's a weird touchpad. Look at it, it's so wide, and pretty short. It's not very tall. And the buttons are separated and they're down here. It has a button to turn the touchpad on and off. Like the HDX16, I find that it's a little easy to press while trying to hit the spacebar. However, unlike the HDX16, it's lowered a little bit more into the case. So it's a good deal harder to press than on the HDX model. Here, of course, we can see the label for our Turion X2 CPU, which we will talk about later, ATI Radeon graphics, and Wi-Fi, which is a bit of an odd thing to advertise. After all, this is like 2008, and Wi-Fi on laptops had been standard for many years. But anyway, let's do a quick walk around of the ports. Kensington Lock, VGA, HP Dock, Gigabit LAN, HDMI, eSATA plus USB 2, SD card reader, remote, of course, one of my favorite features of the uh, HP laptops. On the front, you've got IR receiver for the remote, uh, headphone, two of them, which can be used separately, microphone, and on the left, you have two USB 2, 56K modem, power jack, two USB 2, and your optical drive. It's not a Blu-ray like the HDX16, it's just a DVD rewritable, but still, I, I mean, a DVD rewritable is a pretty nice drive. Well, let's go ahead and get this little guy fired up while I talk about specs. And here we are on the desktop, or at least about to be on the desktop. I mentioned that this has a Turion CPU, rather a Turion X2 Ultra 64, which is oddly Nintendo 64 sounding, and I love it. And this screen is washing out my camera, so let me turn that down. But yes, I've actually never looked at a Turion Ultra CPU, 
and it's actually not that interesting. I wasn't too impressed with the Turion X2 mobile, so I was hoping the Ultra would be better, but it turns out Ultra is just AMD's moniker for any chips above the blazing fast speed of 2 GHz. And that's really not that much, considering that a 2 GHz AMD Turion performs in the range of a 1.6 GHz Core 2 Duo. So that means this ultra 2.1 GHz chip, the ZM80, I believe, yes, it's a ZM80, is still only about as fast as a 1.6 GHz Core 2 Duo, but it consumes a good deal of power, about 35 watts. So that is a little bit of a letdown for this machine, honestly, but the ATI graphics show promise. On paper, uh, oops, on paper, they should be about equivalent to the GeForce 7, uh, sorry, 9300 found in smaller pavilions like the DV3000. And, well, technically it's an integrated graphics chip because the ATI HD3470 is on the chipset. And these have better Windows 10 driver support, so you don't get weird and wacky bugs and glitches like you do on the, uh, the X1200 that I tested a little while back. So definitely, if you're going to get a Torreon laptop, go for the, uh, the Ultra series, because that'll give you the best experience. I have the typical 4 gigabytes of memory and it runs at the full 800 megahertz because the CPU's front side bus is capable of clocking it that high. And you can see I only have 3.7 available because you can allocate up to 256 megabytes for the integrated graphics. So of course, I gave it the full amount because while the graphics chip is on paper about as fast as a GeForce, I have a feeling using the system memory will be a bit of a deficit because the GeForce cards have about a gigabyte of their own RAM. But before we get into testing the graphics cards, I should just do a quick test of the keyboard. It feels almost identical to the HDX16. Pretty nice feeling. The keys don't have a lot of travel, and yet they don't quite require a lot of force to push down. I'm not a keyboard expert, but it feels nice. Now, one final bit of a complaint with this laptop, similarly to the HP 2000, the, uh, sorry, I blanked, Pavilion DV2500, it's really bad at cooling the CPU. Which is odd, because obviously they learned their lesson and put a huge vent on the bottom here. But these Turion chips just don't run very cool. They are based on a less advanced architecture than the Core 2 Duo, and therefore they consume a lot more power to do the same work. However, the same can't be said about the integrated graphics, and as you're about to see, they're pretty good at... How did the desktop freeze? Anyway, the integrated graphics are pretty good at uh, competing with a higher wattage NVIDIA chipset, so I'm going to show that off right now. I very well could just be going insane, but I swear the bezel is slightly thicker on the left than it is on the right. And this is something that I'm actually going to prove right now. It's about one and a half on that side and only about 1.2 on the other side. So for whatever reason, the bezel is thicker on the left than on the right, but I mean, it's, it doesn't ruin the laptop. The screen is a nice glossy display at the resolution of 1280 by 800, very standard for the time. And I'm going to start off with an onslaught map, actually. We're going to do Arctic Stronghold. And also kind of show off those speakers, because these are Altec Lansing speakers, just like the HDX16 and most other HP laptops, until they switched over to uh, Beats and then Bang & Olufsen. 
but they're quite good. The touch controls are as finicky as always, so it's good that they have this remote because you'll actually need to get it out to do most of your precise volume adjustment. But as you can see, it's running exceptionally well and it's definitely staying on par with the GeForce card. And in some areas, it's been performing a little better than I recall the GeForce 9300 performing. It also uh, ends up consuming less power than the GeForce card because, I mean, it's just on the chipset. So it's a bit of a lower wattage deal. So even through particle effects and explosions, it maintains a decent frame rate. It's nothing crazy. It's a pretty modest, you know, mid-30s to mid-40s. Uh, in like higher action areas, but let me remind you, I'm running this game on the absolute max settings, so it's pretty admirable that a low-end card is keeping up with this game, and come on, get out of here. Nice aim. How do you miss with a homing missile? How bad are you? Twice! Yes! I'm so good at this game. You can tell I've played way too much Unreal Tournament 2004. Oh, there was a bit of a stutter there. But that's really the first big stutter I've seen. Yes. Yeah, occasionally there is a bit of a stutter, and I have a feeling that's more due to the memory than the video card itself. As I've mentioned, it has 256 megabytes of, damn, of system DDR2. And while it is running at 800 megahertz, it's obviously an extra hoop for the card to jump through versus if it just, you know, had its own memory. Now the fan is starting to ramp up, but it's nothing too bad. It's not, you know, distracting. It is a good deal louder than the uh, the other HP laptops that I've tested, though. I guess there's just a curse of the Turion CPUs being very inefficient. Well, on Ice Tomb, it's certainly holding its own somewhat well. I believe on this map, I've played this before, actually, you'll see a few stutters, but generally, it holds up pretty damn well. And, again, this is integrated graphics, technically. Although it is an ATI chipset, it's on the System North Bridge, so it would be wrong to say that it's discreet. And, well, I think it's actually performing better than the 9300 did on this map. And it's... I mean, they, they perform just about the same. They do better in some areas and worse in other areas than each other, but... Generally, the two chipsets compare pretty well, and both are pretty solid solutions at the end of the day. Damn. I would say uh, the ability to allocate more memory to it certainly does help it out when compared to the Intel GMA graphics on the Core 2 Duo side because the Core 2 Duo chips have pretty great integrated graphics, but I think the max I've ever seen on one was 128 megabytes. So perhaps, perhaps the setting double the memory is definitely helping it out in comparison to a GMA chip in uh, some more VRAM heavy areas. Like for example, that Onslaught map because those are typically more VRAM heavy, they're large, there's vehicles, and a ton of bots, which mainly the CPU handles. But anyway, point is, it runs well. It, it does its little thing quite well. I haven't really tested the speakers in depth, so I'm gonna do that right now. That brings us to our next thing I don't like, which is the wireless card. What did it come with again? It's something from Broadcom, and it kind of sucks. It is a Broadcom 4322AG, 
and it'll do uh, 802.11 ABG in. It's very good over 802.11 in, but in areas with 802.11 G networks, I've found it to be almost unusable, as in it is in the 100 kilobit per second range, which is very unfortunate. And as you see, of course the remote works, but the IR receiver is on the front, so I can't really show it to you like that. Let's, let's load something else. The bass on these isn't quite as impressive as, say, the Pavilion DV2000, or especially the HDX16, which had a discrete subwoofer. However, these speakers are very good for their class, and I'd say the GPU is a pretty, pretty, is a pretty solid trade-off from the Pavilion DV2000, which could barely turn on without hitting 100 Celsius. So honestly, I'd say it's, it's absolutely fine. Well, that's about where I'm going to wrap up this video. It's a fantastic little machine, and it goes nicely on the shelf next to my HDX16. It's pretty, it looks great, has a nice screen, good audio, and great performance, despite it being a little inefficient due to the Turion processor. But this is absolutely one I'd recommend checking out if you're into laptops like I am. Definitely glad to have this in my collection as always, but that's where I'm going to wrap up this video. Thank you everyone so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope you'll join me for another future episode.